It's fun for me to think back at different memories of my life, like different adventures and I don't know, maybe I'm a, a little nostalgic, but I just like thinking about those things, like the time when I was 14 and in Australia just hiking through the rainforest. I had my full Steve Irwin impersonation going like, Crikey, what do we have here? And I was swinging from vines on giant trees like Tarzan, like it was amazing. Or I remember even just last year driving out to a cabin in the mountains of Colorado for a couple days during spring break to just hike all around and relax. Or even just yesterday, I was watching some kids for Revision's mom's group and we played an incredibly tense game of hide and seek. Like I couldn't find them anywhere. The wide open table that they were hiding underneath in the middle of the room while they whisper screamed, shh, he's coming. It just must've been super camouflage or something. No, I'm just kidding. They were four years old. They're terrible at hide and seek, but it was still an adventure. And, and as I think about adventures in my life, so often it wasn't necessarily like what I was doing that made it so cool, but it was the people that I was with that made it so special. Like a couple of weeks ago when I went on an adventure to Goodwill to find a little candle holder thing that would go in this decorative lantern that I found at Target for $5, which I know already sounds super exciting, but I assure you, like the blood was pumping, the hunt was on, like, what Goodwill have what we were looking for? And the best part about this adventure, it wasn't the fact that we found the candle for 50 cents, which we did, but it was the company that I had with me that made an ordinary trip to the store become a fun adventure. Which made me think of this line that I was reading this week that said, on your journey of life and faith, you can't always choose what happens, but you can choose who you journey with. And that makes me think that we should probably think like really hard and intentionally about the people that we're journeying with, right? Because other people have the power to impact our faith. I think we can all agree with that. In fact, we just finished an entire series last month about how the people around us have the power to impact or influence our faith. And now I can already hear some of you guys pushing back, like, fine and dandy, Jeff. We need to think about the people we're journeying with. But it's not like I can choose the people around me. Like, I didn't choose my family. I didn't choose who I go to school with or who lives in my neighborhood. In fact, some of you might be thinking, like, I don't even have one friend that I can count on, let alone several that I could choose from. Like, if I had a choice, I would choose differently. And fair enough, like especially in middle and high school, I get that there's only so much that you can control about your life and relationships. Like it's totally impossible to make a good friend appear out of thin air. Like I know you can't snap your fingers and make a perfect family. I know you can't get new classmates or neighbors or teammates, but here's something that you can do. You can choose to invest in a few great relationships. Like the kind of relationships that fill you up and point you towards Jesus. And so that begs the question, which relationships are those? Like, which relationships should I be investing in? And there are two Proverbs that I love that talk about this. And if you, you don't know a proverb, it's just a short, wise saying. And the Bible has an entire book full of them called Proverbs. And there's two that I want to look at today. One is Proverbs 12, 26, which says, The righteous choose their friends carefully, but the wicked lead them astray. And then Proverbs 13, 20, which says, Become wise by walking with the wise. Hang out with fools and watch your life fall to pieces. Now, this isn't exactly a revolutionary idea. Like, you've probably heard the same idea from your parents or your grandparents, a teacher or leader, but they might have said it like this, like, show me your friends and I'll show you your future. Or who you spend time with is who you become. Like, we all know this happens. We've seen it in ourselves. We've seen it in other people. Like, we become like the people we surround ourselves with. And so let me throw out this idea. If we want to get closer to Jesus, and if you're a Christian in the room right now, like I would hope that would be a yes for you. But if you want to get closer to Jesus, shouldn't we surround ourselves with people who also want to get closer to Jesus? And I can't help but like think of the people in my life who have shaped me the most. But people like Mike, who is my youth pastor and for the last almost 11 years has been such an incredible example and role model, leader, friend, and someone that I can always count on, which has helped build those qualities and traits in myself so that I can be able to do that same thing for others. Or some key friendships in high school, like my friend David, who you've heard me talk about before and how he first invited me to church. And we've been best friends and walking through life together ever since. Or in college, my friend Dalton, who helped me continue to develop my faith even deeper and think more intentionally and critically and always be there for me to talk about life and faith and whatever, really. 
And as I think about some of these key relationships in my life that have helped shape me and turn me into who I am today, there's some consistent themes in the character of these people. Like there's a strong faith and humility, there's kindness, there's honesty, there's consistency, there's this genuine care for each other and really too just being able to have a ton of fun together with these guys. Like it's definitely not always serious, that's for sure. But their character and their integrity and consistency have helped me grow so much closer to Jesus and it's because we were all able to see that in each other and then choose to invest in those relationships. And now in some ways these relationships may you may be able to say that they were accidental. Like I was fortunate enough to have crossed paths with them when I did, but these relationships, they were also a choice. But they're relationships that I chose to invest in by picking up the phone and getting together with them in person and seeking them out and not just expecting them to happen. And as we head into small groups today, I want us to be thinking about the relationships in our life. Like whether you chose them or not and just ask ourselves some questions about them. Like why is it so important to surround myself with people who follow Jesus? Or do I have people in my life pointing me towards Jesus? Or how do I cultivate these types of relationships in my life? Because you see, every relationship that you have will impact your faith in some way. But the question that you need to answer is, can this relationship help me grow closer to God or not? Like our relationships with other believers, they should help us grow closer to God, but are they? And our relationships with people who don't believe in Jesus, they can also help us grow closer to God, but are they pushing us closer or are they pulling us away? Like these are important questions to consider for ourselves. And so what do the relationships in your life look like? If you want to continue to grow on this adventure of following Jesus, and I so desperately want that for you, you're going to need people to join you on the journey. And unfortunately, you can't control every relationship that comes your way, but you can choose to take a step back from the ones that are leading you away from Jesus and then invest more in the ones that are leading you closer to Jesus. Like, I think this is just so critical for us to be thinking about in our own lives because I've seen God move so powerfully through the relationships in my life. And if you start asking and answering some of these same questions to apply to your relationships in your life, I can confidently say that he will do the same for you. You ready for this? Yeah, just light it. Okay, three, two, one, go! It's gotta be perfect. (laughs) Sweet. That is a wrap.